What's going on, everybody? Do those bye week blues have you feeling down? Well, I'm back with four more must start players for week six in the NFL. Let's get into it. Starting off strong with Brock Purdy. He's currently ranked as QB 15 on Football Guys Weekly Ranks. And we all know he's a top seven quarterback this year with 20 points per game averaging. He is second among quarterbacks in fantasy points per drop back at 0.67. He's always dropping back and get throwing the ball, getting you points. I think he's a top seven play the rest of the season. He's got two rushing touchdowns on the season, which is tied for sixth. He has not thrown an interception. And the offense itself is averaging 33 points a game which is second in the NFL, thanks to the 70 burger from the Miami Dolphins. Let's jump into the tape and talk about the offensive creativity that we're seeing. You currently watched Kyle Juszczyk go right to left. They're going to motion George Kittle from left to right, as well as Juszczyk left to right on this play to get a huge play, not really a huge play, but a big play down the right-hand sideline to my guy, like I'm a guy, Brandon Ayuk. And what I love about the offense, like I talked about the creativity, we see just a little bit of motion here. They are always looking to move players across the sideline or across the field to move the linebackers. If they can move the linebackers, they can shift the safeties and everyone in one way or the other. They can make big plays. So what they do is they actually run a play action run, which is split zone with George Kittle moving left to right, offensive line kind of stepping off this way. And they bring these linebackers fully up. And they also run a little bit of simulation movement with Kyle Juszczyk. You have Brandon Ayuk down at the bottom of your screen. He's going to release to the outside, get upfield a little bit, and then go out to the out. Look at the way they condense the defense. They condense the offensive line with the ball on the left, on the left hash. And they create a bunch of space on the right-hand side. All of this to say... That they're so creative. Kyle Shanahan does a great job of simulating different ways of getting the ball in playmakers' hands to get into other playmakers' hands like Brandon Ayuk down the field. And then you have Brock Purdy, who's a much better quarterback in terms of extending, throwing the ball downfield than Jimmy Garoppolo ever was for this San Francisco 49ers defense, or excuse me, offense. I did this the last time too. Their offense. He's fantastic for their offense. And what I mean is you can watch how the playmakers are opening up. George Kittle's running this deep bender over the middle of the field. And then they have Brandon Ayuk running the exact same route where he's going to release to the outside, get out, but he's going to come down and turn face to the quarterback. On the left-hand side, they're running more of a switch release. So Debo Samuel is just coming to the inside here, coming down. And then Juwan Jennings is going to basically switch out to the outside, try to get some of these corners to move around. All right, so Brock Purdy is going to be you know in the pocket. He's going to feel a little bit of pressure to his left. He's going to come up into the pocket and get out. So watch number 14 here. He's getting down inside the hole here. He's looking for George Kittle. All right. He's going to come across here. So while that's happening, you see his head go back to the quarterback. A little bit of hesitation as he stops there. And then we see Purdy, one, he recognizes that he's not moving anymore and that George Kittle is going to be coming across the middle of the field here. So he gets up out of the pocket to his right. 14 stops moving. It's a big play to George Kittle. So he recognizes defensive movement in the back half and is able to adjust his playmaking off of it. And then he has a fantastic touch with the football, delivering this to the outside of the numbers to Brandon Ayuk in stride. A great job here. Again, we have Brandon Ayuk running just this little out corner route here. Release to the inside, flash to the corner. They have Jennings running a little bit of a whip route here just on this side of the field, all right? And that's all that he's looking at. Brandon Ayuk gets out there, opening up the middle middle part of the field initially, breaking back across the face of number 19, and that ball delivered with fantastic touch down the sideline to Brandon Ayuk. So Brock Purdy is functioning extremely high in this offense. He is delivering the ball in different ways at different levels and deeper down the field than Garoppolo ever did. So top seven play for me with this entire offense, the way that they're able to use it. I know Cleveland's defense is tough. tough. They're 28th in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks and running backs, but Dallas was 31st in points allowed going into that game i'm always starting brock purdy as much as i can he is an absolute must start for me this week into the next guy that we're going to talk about curtis samuel currently wide receiver 42 on football guys weekly ranks and this is not your typical yeah you got to plug him and play him because he's got a fantastic matchup we're going to get to it but curtis samuel is developing a really nice connection with sam howell the last two weeks he's totaled 15 targets he's got two touchdowns 107 total yards and 13 catches 
he's really stepping up. And in the red area, he's being involved for the commanders. He has four red zone targets and three red zone rushes. That's how you know they really want to get him involved in different ways, whether it's in motion, lining him up in different places, but also they have been doing a great job of getting him all over the field against different matchups. And against Atlanta, I know they don't allow a lot of points to wide receivers, but they have allowed a lot of points to slot receivers. 16.4 to Christian Kirk, 19.6 to Amon Ross St. Brown, and 19.7 to Jaden Reed. Let's talk a little bit more about Curtis Samuel, what he offers to this entire offense here with Washington. And again, I think that you can reasonably say that he is a player that we've always kind of liked just his skill set, the way he can make guys miss after the after the catch. He can open up downfield. He's got that speed, and he's very trustworthy down the field. He's a big playmaker. Ron Rivera fe feeling a little bit of that last night, seeing a little bit of that going forward, and I love what he brings. Again, he's in the slot here, and he's going to stem this just a little bit towards the outside as soon as we see this defender getting back a little bit more and more and more, opening up this gap between these two defenders, that's when Samuel takes it down the seam in between those defenders and the incoming safety. Sam Howell with a nice throw, allowing Samuel to come back with his body, adjust to that football, protect it right there. He seems right down the field. Nice protecting that football. Nice throw into the end not to the end zone but now inside the five yard line and this is where i was talking about he's being used in the red zone really well and in different ways the bears are going to come off the edge here with a slot corner blitz sam howell does a nice job of calmly identifying it knowing that his receivers are running a nice little combo route here on the outside easy touchdown to curtis samuel this is what i mean by scheming guys up because of that blitz it makes this safety here who's in the middle of your field have to be man-on-man -man coverage with Curtis Samuel. And the confusion is because they run a little bit of a switch release. So you have Terry McLaurin who's running this short underneath, and then you have the out route here, and that forces the out, the uh, safety that's covering Curtis Samuel to have to take a hesitation second to see, are they going to switch receivers? Are they going to switch responsibilities? And in that moment, you see the hesitation by number 22, touchdown to Curtis Samuel. So he is getting involved in the red area and that's always nice to see for Curtis Samuel. But also he's being, again, moved around the offense and developing that chemistry with Sam Howell. With When you see this off coverage and you have two curls, you have Curtis Samuel and you have uh, Terry McLaurin running curl routes, boom, against that off coverage. He goes to the outside receiver one because he's he likes the matchup with the ability to make a man miss after the catch. But also you have a number uh, the defenders coming downhill here on Terry McLaurin and here. So you have two guys possible. So they've lined up Curtis Samuel on the outside with make you miss potential. And you have a little bit more cushion backed off here. So he goes, Sam Howell takes the ball out of the snap directly to Curtis Samuel in able to get him one man miss right there. And then he's able to get out. So he's being involved in the quick game as well, which is always important to get those PPR points for your receivers. He scored 18 plus points the last two weeks in a row. Again, I believe against the Atlanta Falcons, you might see them take some deep shots against the secondary for Washington and put them back behind in this game again. And that's where Samuel's value really becomes a big potential and a big hit for him. So I like him this week against Atlanta's slot receivers, and I'm starting him every place that I've got him this week. Next guy, Cade Otten. Yes, Cade Otten, the tight end for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The next guy we're going to get into today is Cade Otten, tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their offense is being run at a very high level right now. Baker Mayfield is having probably his best start to a season that we've seen in terms of him not turning the football over, getting the ball out on third down and being exceptionally accurate down the field. He has elevated the play of this offense and K. Dotton as the big body matchup this week against the Detroit Lions defense that is second most, that allows the second most points to tight ends in the NFL. This is a really good matchup for him. He's not getting a lot of production, but he's playing a lot. 96% of the snaps, and on those snaps, he's running a route 81% of the time. That's what we want to see from tight ends. That breakout's coming for him. He scored a touchdown before the bye against the Saints, and I just think that he's being used well, 34% of the time in the slot. So let's talk a little more about what Kate Otten brings to the field for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. Like I said, being moved around a lot, he's being isolated in a 3 by one 
formation here on the right hand side of the offense and he is able to get open against multiple different types of defenders he kind of is that matchup problem that you see between safeties and linebackers and if they can isolate him on a safety depending on whoever it is this is one of the areas that you can really get that so he's going to release this slightly outside and when tyron matthews safety comes off he's going to be in this position outside leverage you're going to see a swim move over the middle of the field and he does get open now unfortunately this safety right here this 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 guy over here ends up coming down on that route but it's a very nice backside dig that goes through the progression that baker gets to eventually unfortunately like i said that safety jumps the route that would have been a nice conversion on third down for a first down to k dot because that route running there that understanding of where the safety is and how to manipulate him to stem him outside and then cut back inside across his face is really nice bit of of movement on otten's part here He's in a reduced split, so he's not attached, but he's not outside. He's not technically in the slot either. He's got that reduced split. You're going to see Tyron Matthew, the safety, come down and have to cover him one-on-one -on -one in space again. And this is where the route running I'm talking about comes into play. Hip sync and change of direction all to break off Tyron Matthew. What, what I like about this is that, again, he's got an understanding that Tyron Matthew's got to reduce the space here. So he knows he's running a whip route takes a little bit of movement, takes his body, changes the direction of the safety where he has to go, and then cuts back across it, sinking those hips, coming out of his break with some acceleration and playmaking desire. Because I do think that that's important for the tight end position. He wants to make a catch. He wants to make impact on this offense. And I think that he can do that against any type of defense, a really good defense in the Saints where he was open multiple, multiple times. And then he's in this kind of attached but almost in a sniffer position a uh, tight end position in this bunch formation on the right hand side they do a good job of using him in multiple different ways this one chipping the defensive end and then going out on a route where he is again wide open he's not going to get the ball here but look we're seeing the the space generated from the tampa bay often uh, offense and they run the ball they use jet sweeps they use play action out of under center which brings you know an extra safe an extra linebacker down on a blitz empties that middle of the field where k dot is again running into space and i just think that this week against the lions you might find yourself in a lot more space maybe a little bit of underestimating the offense of the tampa bay buccaneers just a little bit I just think that Kate Otten has a nice matchup against the Detroit Lions defense this week in a game where you're going to have to score points to keep up with the Lions. I know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a good defense. Ben Johnson has proven that it doesn't really matter. He's going to put points up. So Kate Otten is a must play for me this week with Mike Evans not necessarily playing this week. He's that big body guy that I think can score a touchdown against the Lions defense. My last pick this week is my long shot of the week. Brandon Cooks. Yeah, I know he hasn't really done much this year, but he's ranked as the wide receiver 59 on Football Guys Weekly Rankings. And the reason he's a long shot is because this offense just has to open up. And he's one of the players on this offense that can absolutely do that for the Cowboys. And when I'm talking about not doing much, he really hasn't. He's only got 19 targets on the season, nine catches for less than 100 yards. His average depth of target coming into San, uh, Sunday Night Football was 8.2. His career average is 12.8. That's got to change going forward. Like he's got to be the playmaker down the field in this offense. And it's time to get Cooks going. The Chargers are fourth in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers this year. I'm all in this week for Brandon Cooks. I think they're going to get the train started. And the big reason that I'm starting him this week is because I do think that they're going to get not just the offense going, the passing game going, but they're going to get CeeDee Lamb going and when you do that early in the game you allow brandon cooks to do this which is take the top off of a defense and get open downfield and i know the what i know what you're saying yeah he's got a step but he's one of the has been one of the premier deep threats in the nfl he really has and when you get a step on a corner whose top end speed doesn't match yours in charverius ward that's open and they're running a little bit of a, a sale concept here release to the inside or outside release and go outward from a corner route and then you have the underneath tight end doing almost to the flat but more of an intermediate route so typically a sale concept is a corner route from cd lamb flat route from that underneath tight end and then a clear out route from the outbound receiver so 
I believe this, again, would be open if you watch the safety turn his hips right here. Boom. I would love to see him come back and throw this ball deep to Brandon Cooks. Maybe we see that going forward this week. But again, that step right there is 100% open for Brandon Cooks. And he's getting open. And this is another one. You see him down at the bottom of your screen again against Charvarius Ward. He's going to inside jab step, release underneath. Nice job evading that press, that jam attempt. And he's open on this dig route over the middle of the field. And just really quickly, just showing you the spacing for the offense. Again, he's running this inside dig route. And Dak Prescott has to layer this throw, okay? And you're going to see a little bit of a chip here on the, the tight end to the, the defensive end, Nick Bosa. He's going to run more of a drag. But watch how the running back and then almost – Michael Gallup running in the exact same area. This spacing is not is not good for the offense. You see how the defense can collapses on it. That's how you throw interceptions. But right here is where I'm talking about for Brandon Cooks. This ball should be layered right in here. Let Dak throw this. He can air it out over or in between Dre, uh, Greenlaw and the underneath the linebacker here. Just throw it in there. Get it in there. I, I would love to see them attempt to throw some more of those in breaking routes over the middle of the field. Why am I picking him this this week? Why am I picking Brandon Cooks to be much better? And why is he my long shot? Is because of this type of play. Dak Prescott's going to throw an interception here, trying to get Brandon Cooks a ball on a short slant route. They don't respect the deep game. If you don't respect the deep game, if you can't force them to respect it, they're going to end up on these Ends of plays all season long. You, you just you can't be throwing it here with no respect given to anybody. Anybody. Nothing matters here. Okay. So, yes, I've got Brandon Cooks breaking out this week finally. I think the entire Dallas Cowboys offense is going to break out in a game where two teams have with should have high-powered offenses and the Dallas Cowboys, I think, will give up points to Justin Herbert, a game where they absolutely get a couple of deep balls to Brandon Cooks. He probably gets in the end zone as well. I'm calling my shot this week. Brandon Cooks scores his first touchdown, has a breakout game for the Cowboys. Start him. Absolutely loving doing this for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the film, the stats, and I hope that these guys get into your lineups and help you win this week all of your fantasy matchups. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys next time.